the liquid crystal display, the LCD, and the liquid crystal library. So on Thinkercad, create a new circuit. Click on create a new circuit. You want to add your Arduino. Let's go for the Arduino with the breadboard. It's a lot cleaner. And search for LCD. So to rotate it, select the component, which is the LCD in this case, and press the R button on your key. Now, before we play with the LCD, we want to be notice some few pins at the bottom. You see the LED, LED cathode, LED um, anode. Then you see the data pins, data pins. So data pins labeled D0 to D7. See the enable pin, which enables the LCD or enable the data that's being transmitted. And you see the rewrite pin and then register select pin. Then you have VO, VCC and the ground pin. So what we want to do first of all is to connect the ground pin to the ground of the Arduino by connecting it on the breadboard. Because it's ground, we want to label it black. And then VCC to the voltage pin, which is five volts on the breadboard. We've got five volts connection from the Arduino to the breadboard. So to make it easy to read, we will set this to red. Now V V0 is the contrast of the LCD. So let's do this. We go to the data sheet of the LCD on the data sheet. So I am using this data sheet. On the data sheet, if we go all the way down, we notice it's got the block diagram of the L LCD display there. So you've got the actual LCD panel where you see um, the display. And on the as part of the LCD, we notice that we've got the LED, which is the backlight of the LCD display. So when this is on, we get a backlight to display it and to use that we have to connect um, the cathode and the anode pins accordingly. We just connect it the same way as we connect um, basic LED pin. So in order to do that, we will use a resistor. Let's connect the resistor to the circuit. Drag and drop. The resistor, we change the resistor values to 220 ohms. Using 220 ohms resistor. So we have the cathode and then the anode. So what we want to do is connect the anode to the resistor. And that will go to the 5 volt source. So resistor to the 5 volt source. And we connect to the anode. And do that. Move it out of the way. Make it a lot cleaner. So I'm going to double click anywhere to create an additional pin connection so I can move this up. And because it's going to 5 volts, I'm going to um, change the color to red. Then what I want to do is to connect the cathode of the backlight to the ground. I will be choosing the ground pin at the top. So label it black. And 
that can hide that other background. So that connects our backlight for us. So let's see if we start the simulation. We've got a backlight being switched on. Without it, if let's say we disconnect the power, then we switch it on, we have no backlight showing. So in a sense, I'll just press Control Z and then redo to show the backlight then for us. Hit, so back to the block diagram, we see the block diagram in the data sheet. We have uh, the contrast, which is V0, V0 is the contrast. And what we want to do is to be able to adjust the contracts from zero to um, five volts. So we have V0, which is contrast on the, in the description as we see. So we want to drag the potentiometer and put a potentiometer in the circuit. We can drop it on here or drop it on the side. Make things a lot cleaner. So with the potentiometer, you've got um, terminal one and terminal two and the actual, the actual um, pin that you want to control from zero volts to five volts. So pin one can go to either five volts or zero volts, and then pin terminal two will go to the alternative. If you're using five volts on terminal one, you use zero volts on terminal two or vice versa. Then the pin that you want to control, which is in this case is V0, V0 will go to the contrast. Let's move it up. Connect V0 to contrast. And we want to use, let's say, pick gray for that color. And we connect the variable resistor from Terminal one to ground, the way black, and terminal two to five volts, the way red. So if we start the simulation, we've got a backlight on, and then we vary the resistor. We notice that as we go through the variable resistor, the backlight dims up. So we can set it up to high, lower, high, lower. Yeah. So now if we go back to the data sheet, to what pins we have, we've made use of VDD, we've made use of the ground, we've made use of the um, V0, which is the contrast. Then we see DB0 to DB7 is the actual data that we're transmitting or it's a configuration data uh, is a bit sequence that we're transmitting to the LCD display. Now this is bi-directional, we can read from the LCD or we can write from the LCD. So to write to the LCD, which is what we'll be using in this case, we need to set the right configuration for the RW pin, which is the read-write pin. So if we look on, on at the description, pin five is the read-write pin for transmitting data. Now you can either send, uh, make use of all the eight bits to send data, or you can use enable, which is basically um, four bit. So you can use it in a bit mode or four bit mode. Now if we've got DB0 to DB3, which is the lower nibble. Um, so that's it's um, tri-stage data, which means we can use it um, either uh, as an input, output, or we just simply buffer it. And also it's used to transfer the data between the microprocessor or the Arduino in this case, and the LCD module. So the lower level is not used if you are using it in the four bit mode. So four bit mode, we need to enable the upper level, which is DB4 to DB7. So we will be using 
DB4 to DB7 for this particular um, design. So we go back to the circuit and we've got DB7. We can connect DB7 to D2. Stop the simulation. So DB7 connect. Let's label this purple. Then we connect db6 to digital pin 3 make the data pins purple or choose any color that is appropriate for you then db5 to pin 4 becomes a lot cleaner for you to visualize, for you to see. Okay, so we change DB4 to purple as well. So we are using pin 2 connected to DB7 and all the way to pin 5 which is connected to DB4. So we are using 4-bit mode, 4-bit mode, and because we are using the 4-bit mode, we are not using the lower levels. Okay, now we need to we need the register select pin, uh, which we would tell the LCD whether we are configuring, um, we sending a command or we sending data. So we need to select reg register select. And to use register select, we will select, we will connect the register select to pin 12. Register select to pin 12. Choose color, choose orange for register select. So in terms of how the LCD operates, if we look at the timing for writing mode, basically first we, we set the register select, change register select variable value, and we set the write, read write enable. So once we set the read write enable to zero, which means we are ready to write. If we go down, and we look at the read write enable for for the for the reading mode. So for reading mode, read write enable signal should be one. So if we send the signal one, it means that we are in the reading mode. But we are interested in the writing mode. So back to the writing mode. So in the writing mode, after we set the register select to sending data. Then we the set or sends zero to the read write and enable pin rewrite pin, which means we are ready to write. Then the data will not be transmitted until the enable pin goes high. So first we signal that we're writing. Then if the enable pin goes high, then it means that data is ready to be transmitted. So as long as the enable pin holds the data will be transmitted. The data on, in this case, DB4 to DB7 will be transmitted. And when we want to stop transmission, um, we de set the enable signal, enable pin. Then on the next clock cycle, it would um, data will stop um, being transmitted. Then we can de set. Um, we can set the read write pin again, and in the reverse. So register select read write pin and then the enable pin are the pins that we need to set now so we've got the read write pin in this particular case we want to we don't really need the read write pin because by default it's going to be zero which means we are only writing to it we 